are live. What's up, everybody? Oops, I should turn this up so you guys can hear me. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Happy Friday, Mob Crew. I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, real quick, if you guys can hear me okay, please put a one in the chat. Um, yeah, I hope the number's climbing. This story, uh, I'm sure it's going to gain a tr um, some attention here soon. Um, but this is a crazy story. Uh, Sade... Robinson, which we're going to cover here in just a minute. Wow. Um, very disturbing. I hope they get justice for this guy. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. But before we get started, we always like to get back by featuring The Missing. And today, I'm actually going to feature Gwen Brunel because... Even though we just got back searching for Aiden Clune last weekend, uh, we are actually going to go out and search for her planning on next weekend. So this is Gwen Brunel. She's 27 years old when she went missing on June 26th of last year. She was planning a trip to go to California. She was going to be doing some rabbit judging. And she was going to split the trip into two days, stop in uh, Nevada, and then finish off in Southern California to judge some rabbits. This is something she grew up passionate about. Uh, but when she left on June 26, she had either shut her phone off or it just died of uh, power. And so they weren't able to trace her. And she didn't make it very far because a few days later... They would find her car just on the border of Idaho and Oregon. And she had pulled off on the side of the highway. And for some reason, uh, they could not find her. They found her car and the rabbits. Uh, sadly, a few of them passed away. But I think majority of them were saved. Although it had been like five days since she went missing. And so they started a search party for her, but all they found was uh, a few th things of her clothing, a shirt that was caught up on barbed wire, and then they also found her boots and socks, and they were literally found just like this, which is absolutely crazy, uh, like just laid on top of each other, crisscrossed, both fully unzipped, and these are her two socks here. Uh, they are mismatched socks. Um, and no, that's not a dish, dish rag. I always, every time I look at that, I think of a dish rag because I have the same color. But that's all that they've found of her. Uh, her wallet, purse, most of her items, uh, except I don't think her phone. I can't remember if they found her phone or not. But her keys, just about everything else was found in her car along with the rabbits. And it's possible... Either they think of one or two things. She either she was, this trip was kind of a ruse and she was actually going to meet up with some guy, even though she had a boyfriend. Uh, it's possible maybe she was meeting up with another guy and there was foul play. Or uh, she did, she was on medication. She did kind of have anxiety and um, they wonder if she kind of, this was kind of too much for her and she kind of stopped and contemplated what she was going to do next and then for whatever reason she ended up wandering off and wasn't seen again so anyway uh long story short uh we are going out there we're planning uh next weekend uh not set in stone but I, we're about 80 percent sure just got to make sure everything's right so we're gonna probably go out two days for her we're gonna go out right to where um because her clothing was found less than a mile from where her car was so if in a case where the clothing was taken off due to hypothermia, then I would assume her body wouldn't be too far. I don't know how far a body, that's something I need to do some research on as to how far someone would go when they're in the state of hypothermia before they succumb to the elements. Now, obviously, we don't know if that's what happened, but anyway. So we're going to go to that. I'm going to speak with the parents and uh, get all those details. So anyway, uh, any support towards the channel, PayPal, Venmo, uh, Super Chats, uh, that will go towards our upcoming search for Gwen Brunel. And so now moving on to uh, today's story. Let me move this over. Just 
that's that. Oh, and just one thing. If you guys see me, like, freak out and get up, that's because somebody's knocking on my door. I'm supposed to have my air conditioner fixed for all of a sudden, because uh, here in Utah, it'll go from, like, you know, mid-50s, 60s, and then the next day it's 80. Um, and they were supposed to come yesterday. They didn't. And they were supposed to come today, and they haven't. And I just... Just knowing timing, I think they the office hours are still open for another half hour. So, I don't know. I may have to, like, run up and open the door for them if they do arrive. I don't know. Anyway, so this is, and her name is pronounced Sade, not Sade, uh, Sade Robinson. And this one's kind of interesting. Uh, this, this case has stuck out to me in many different ways. When I heard her birthday, that really stuck out to me because uh, we have the same birthday, which is May 10th. Uh, so she was literally going to be turning 20 years old in less than a month. And so she was 19. And she was born on Mother's Day, and that was uh, the same thing with me. So, um, but this happened on April 1st. So a little backstory on Shaw Day. She worked at a pizza shuttle. I think she had two jobs, but... One of them was Pizza Shuttle uh, in Milwaukee as a cashier. Uh, she was a favorite amongst coworkers and customers. Had nothing but good things to say about her. She was a month away. So not only was she a month away from her birthday, a month away from finishing her associate degree in criminal justice. And was also looking into joining the U.S. Air Force uh, because I believe she had her grandfather and a uncle who were i think the grandfather was a navy veteran i'm not sure about the uncle so um carrot says oh well i heard her birthday was on yeah mother's day yeah so yeah my mother uh god bless her um yeah used to always remind me i was her special boy uh only child and yeah i was born on mother's day after that she had uh three miscarriages so i was i was the lucky one um anyway so 19 years old and april 1st uh she didn't have a boyfriend but she was she was looking uh didn't have anybody steady and so here's a little bit Shade robinson that. graduates with honors a semester early from riverside high school she continues her education at Milwaukee Area Technical College, working towards her associate's degree in criminal justice. In fact, she's only a month away from graduating, but Robinson hasn't been spending all her time in the books. She works through high school and college at the Pizza Shuttle on Milwaukee's Lower East Side. She makes such a difference at work that her coworkers say Robinson is considered the heart of Pizza Shuttle. Former owner Mark Gold says she is the type of employee who never calls out and is loved by customers and her coworkers. You know, I just. So she was going to see this guy, Maxwell Anderson, 33 years old, lives in Milwaukee, Southside. He had worked a number of jobs as a bartender and security uh, at several Milwaukee establishment establishments. Most recently, Victor's Nightclub. And then I think last year he worked at a place called Twisted Fisherman. I think it's Twisted Fisherman. And that's going to come up here in a second. He does have a dark past. He had uh, a, a DA, I have to be careful with that word, along with battery, and then a DUI. And I think another previous charge I may be missing. Uh, but on April 1st, they two were going to meet up. And at 4.15, um, and I actually got the text messages, but we'll get into those later. But uh, they kind of sent text messages back and forth kind of determining where to meet up and they first arranged to meet up at the twisted fisherman which is a restaurant seafood uh anderson mentioned that he also needs to pick up his w-2 form since he used to work there and at 5 20 they both meet up at the restaurant and they have food and drinks at there and then an hour later so like sometime after 6 6 30 they end up going to um, Duke's on Water Bar, which is down the street, which we're going to look at here. So this is Twisted Fisherman here on Canal Street. And they, she had her car, which is a Honda Civic. I forget the make and model or year. And 
this I'm assuming is place- he took the bus, and we'll explain that here in a bit. But so they met there, ate, ate, and maybe had a drink for an hour, and then they went to Duke's. I think it's Duke's on Water. Placing them to at Twisted Fisherman, where he worked, and then later at Duke's on Water. How do we know that they were together that night? They met there. There are multiple surveillance cameras outside these restaurants, both of them, that show her arriving, walking through the east side of the restaurant. He arrived on the west side of the restaurant. There's such good video footage of this. This is just such a good, helpful part of the case. They go there together. He used to work there at the Twisted Fisherman. So the bartender there spoke with police and said, they came in, they sat at the bar together, they had a drink. It seemed friendly and casual. So after they have the drink and eat dinner, then they go to the bar and that is around 6.30. So the bartender there spoke with police and said, They came in, they sat at the bar together, they had a drink. It seemed friendly and casual. Nothing that would alert the bartender to anything that was wrong. He said they just had a few drinks and they left within an hour. They then, according to surveillance, leave together, surveillance videos, to the next place. So then after leaving Dukes on water, so spend in from 6.30 to 9.30, then they left in her vehicle so like i said i believe he probably took the bus and then she drove from the twisted fisherman to the bar and then from there her phone uh travels to anderson's home um and then trouble happens so this is the route from the bar to her home which is southwest And I did get to look up, I wanted to look up this house, but I didn't have time to. But he has this house here. I'm not sure how long he's lived there, because I know he's lived with uh, his grandparents and a couple other places before this. But this is the home here. And it has a basement, so it looks like uh, it could be two stories with a basement. And so they arrived there at 9.42, and then the next thing that happens is at 12.47 a.m., and there's surveillance footage capturing her vehicle driving down the alleyway, and unfortunately, she would not be alive uh, at this time. Uh, let me grab this. Elbow's mom, member for 22 months. Uh, wow, G, still loving your work, Chris. Thank you so much, Elbow's mom. means the world to me, all my members, all my supporters. Um, again, we wouldn't be able to go out and help the missing if it wasn't for you guys. So I'd assume whatever happened happened within an hour because, as we're going to learn, uh, they would start finding body parts, which is absolutely terrible. So here's the video. I don't know. They just recently released this. It's very short, but it shows uh, her car, but he's driving it. And they're leaving the back alleyway. And he's taking a right, and he's heading east. I did try to enhance this a little bit, but it's it's too dark to really tell if there's what's going on. Although this is decent video quali- quality. Anyway, let me get it caught up in chat. Um, oh, I slowed it down, but yeah, I don't think you can really see anything. 14, he attacked his mother's... So a little bit more on his... 2014, he attacked his mother's fiance, tried to break into her house, then stole her car and fled. While living with his grandparents in 2015, he smashed a glass and punched a hole in a wall when they suggested he address his mental health. He smashed their phones when they tried to call police. And in 2019, Anderson admitted to punching a man who was trying to break up a fight between Anderson and a woman. 
So a little bit on the background. And so on April 2nd, when Robinson, now this is kind of interesting. I don't know, her mother claims Wednesday, but the report says April 2nd. Um, so she didn't show up for work. Friends and family grew concerned and reported her missing. And along with that, and we'll get into what he did a little bit later in between this time frame right after he left at 12.47 a.m. But on that day, the next day, uh, they found her. Tw- oh, so it's a 2020 Honda Civic. Uh, it was on fire. So the report says extreme fire damage, completely damaging the interior. According to the criminal complaint, despite the fire damages, fire damage, authorities were able to identify the out the outfit she had been wearing the night of the date, as well as part of an iPhone consistent with her phone in the burned car. So they found her iPhone. They found the clothing she was wearing. They do have surveillance footage, I think, at both places, if I recall. Um, I know at least the one twisted, I think, Twisted Fisherman, probably both, though, uh, where they have surveillance of them. So they know what she was wearing. So her clothing was found in the back of the car along with her iPhone. Clearly, he was attempting to get rid of uh, as much evidence uh, along with her car, some of her body parts would be discovered nearby in that same area. And there's there's multiple areas where they have, I mean, they're still continuing to find her. This is how terrible this case is. And I think before they found the car, somebody uh, southeast uh, near Lake, Lake Michigan, uh, they found a severed leg which was hers. At the time, they didn't know who it was. Her leg was found. On April 2nd, someone found Robinson's leg near the water at Warnamount Park. Police later discovered human remains believed to be Robinson's on Milwaukee's north side, near 30th and Galena, along yeah. with her torched car. It's scary that, you know, you go on. So here's a map of just some of the places that they have been finding her uh, remains, which is absolutely terrible. You have the, the leg found here on April 2nd on the shore. And then they also found her car and more remains near where her car was dumped. Um, in the following days. Well, the car was found there, but then they, I mean, they were just finding remains every other day. I mean, it's absolutely terrible. Last Tuesday. Milwaukee County Sheriff's deputies searched this home near 39th in Oklahoma Friday related to that case. They took a person of interest into custody. 12 News Invest. So I think it was either April 4th or 5th. So they had already found her car, her leg, and then some remains. They didn't specify what parts. Um, they would arrest him. I think it was the third or fourth. It confirms that person is the homeowner. We are not naming him because he hasn't been charged. With more questions than answers, Robinson's family fears connecting the dots may reveal the worst. You have to. Yeah, you got to be pretty messed up. And yeah, they're wondering if, considering his age, you just don't go from nothing to dismembering somebody and throwing them all around downtown. It's absolutely terrible. So, just some of the stuff body part found near her car, body parts found along with her car near 30th Street and uh, Liz. Lisbon Avenue. Then they also found her blanket along with other body parts down the street from that area. Scouring a park in nearby railroad tracks near 31st and Galena after finding body parts in the area Friday, Saturday and Sunday. 12 News Matt Salemi over the scene early Monday morning. We're told that this is an area where human remains were found earlier over the and yes, that's a child park that he left human remains at. Weekend. It's a block away from where police found the car of missing 19-year-old Sade Carlina Robinson, burnt in an alley. Robinson has been missing since last Monday. Her family tells 12 News they also found her blanket in this area near the discovery of one of the body parts. We need y'all's support to help and find more evidence thanks to these people out here. We, we found a little bit more evidence, but we still don't know everything. Neighbors in the mm-hmm. area are in shock. 
Debbie says, I don't think this is, yeah, that's what they're saying. They're, they're wondering, they're, I mean, I, I'm, I would not be surprised, uh, considering if you haven't heard about this case, we're going to learn even some more disturbing stuff about, uh, him and his house. But yeah, they would continue finding more body parts. Uh, some were explained what they were. Um, I, I was trying to kind of keep tab on what they found because they still haven't found all of her, sadly. Uh, they literally found more remains. Uh, let's see, today's the 19th. I think yesterday. Um, And they're still looking for all of her. You would think, I mean, after what it sounds like, they had found all her remains, but apparently not, which is just horrific. We start with developing news in a case that has captivated the Milwaukee area for the past two weeks. A person of interest was taken into custody after a severed leg was found near Lake Michigan last Tuesday. In the days that followed, three more instances of human remains found around <coughs> Milwaukee. Now, new reporting tonight, shedding light on how those crime scenes are connected. CBS 58's Adam Reif live in studio now to break down what we know tonight. Adam. Well, good evening, Jess. If we can now confirm all the body parts that have been found throughout the Milwaukee area over the past two weeks. Now, those, uh, CJK, I don't blame you. There's nothing, you know, obviously we're, there's no photos or nothing graphic, uh, just other than, you know, remains are found, uh, and that's... And yeah, this is a terrible case, but All yeah, nothing graphic going to be shown. That's according to multiple law enforcement sources with knowledge of this case. Meanwhile, the clock is ticking down on when the man who is in custody must be charged or released. A severed leg, at least three other body parts, all from the same woman. Law enforcement agencies have not publicly said who the victim is, and our sources could not confirm the race of the woman the body parts belong to. But the pieces are starting to come together in a case that has puzzled the Milwaukee area for nearly two weeks. The first discovery came last Tuesday when a severed leg was discovered along the lake in Warnemont Park. On Thursday, a person of interest was taken into custody while a home on South 39th Street in Milwaukee was searched by investigators from the state's Department of Justice. That same day, the sheriff's office declared the severed leg case a homicide. More discoveries soon followed. On Friday night, a body part was found near 30th and Lisbon. Human remains were discovered near 31st and Galena Saturday. And more human remains were found Sunday near 30th and Galena. The person of interest is 33-year-old Maxwell Anderson. Court records show a violent past, 39th. This Thursday, multiple sources confirmed Anderson had, in their words, a sex dungeon in his home. A dungeon in his home. That is absolutely true, truly horrific. And there's even more, and we're going to look at here in just a minute. I mean, nothing graphic, of course. CBS but... 58 aerial drone video revealed a hole dug in Anderson's side yard. Yeah, so what was this hole for? Because uh, clearly he didn't put, uh, they didn't mention anything for her, from her. Had in their words, a sex dungeon in his home. CBS 58 aerial drone video revealed a hole. So here's the hole. This is the house. Um, in the driveway, there's like a alley in the back. And instead of like a full road, it's just like a one laner uh, where people can park their car. And anyway, so this is uh, in the side yard here, and I am assuming this is a hole. It looks like a decent sized hole. Uh, it looks like some kind of drain running into uh, a cinder block there, maybe holding the drain up and filtering down in. But you can clearly see there's a hole there. Hole dug in Anderson's side yard. Maybe he was going to put her in there and then. I don't know, video decided that to investigators say shows shot a Robin get rid of her body everywhere else. And since car driving away from Maxwell Anderson's home the night he killed her. Now this new video comes after more body parts were found today along Lake Michigan. CBS 58's Adam Reif live in studio to break down the new information for us. Adam. New video from the night of the murder, new body parts discovered, and today we also heard from Maxwell Anderson's right. family for the very first time. This all comes as Sade Robinson's family plans a public vigil to honor her. 
Here's the new video. Prosecutors say that's Sade Robinson's car. The home security video shows the car heading south down the alley that leads away from Maxwell Anderson's garage. The video is timestamped at 12.47 a.m. in the early morning hours of April 2nd, roughly three hours after Anderson and Robinson arrived at his home. In the video, the car turns west. From there, investigators say Anderson went to Warnemont Park and locations in Milwaukee to dispose of her body parts. According to cell phone data and more surveillance video, they believe Anderson killed Robinson sometime between arriving at his house and leaving Warnemont Park. More body parts were found early Thursday morning when some... So this is the path that he took. Uh, and as I was going and collecting all the information, we have even a little bit more information than this, but it seems he left his house. So obviously they met up at the bar. He had clearly had, must have taken a bus. Um... Or gotten a ride, but or an Uber or something like that. But then they, she drove him back to his house, and then sadly, it would have happened have to happen within the first hour because I'm assuming getting rid of a body like that would take time. And then at 12:47 he leaves, and they track him uh, going west, southwest. At this uh, Warnemont Park here, which is this Lake Michigan, and assuming he dumped a decent size of remains there because that's where they're still searching, and they even found more remains since then in that somewhere in this area here. And then it looks like from there, he drove up uh, kind of northeast, northwest, and then decided to dump more remains. I don't know why he just didn't get rid of all the remains in one place. I mean, this is... I don't know what this guy was thinking. And... Then he burnt her car. And then close from there, there's actually a bus stop. And then there's actually a bus stop close to his house. And it's just like a straight shot. So he kind of planned on where... Um, I think as far as getting rid of the car, because uh, like I said, there's a bus stop that's not far from there. And it's just a straight shot south, uh, basically straight back to his house. What I know. happened? What led up to... So here's a little bit from the mother and them kind of giving more. Uh, the mother, of course, is absolutely devastated uh, for her daughter to go out like this. Absolutely terrible. This night. Yes, Nancy. This is... Yes. Nancy, the last time I spoke to my daughter was on Easter Sunday, okay? We seen her. Crazy. She came by... My parents' home, we spent the Sunday together. This was Easter Sunday, okay? Um, I cooked for them. Both of my daughters, we all met by my parents' house where I'm currently at. We all commute here. This, this like, they, they're claiming this was a first date. Like, you know, it's just a first date. I don't, this dude never, she never mentioned this dude to us. And we do have the text messages between them. I got them just kind of towards the end. So when we get towards the end, I'll share those. Um, but the report is, is because he worked at that Twister Fisherman that they went to first before they went to Dukes on Water. Uh, the bartender there, because I, I think they ate and got drinks at Twister Fisherman and then went to the other bar. He had said that Either she had said it or um, the other guy, uh, the killer, had told him that they were on their first day. And we're, I, I we're learning a little yeah. bit. Because she was kind of a little upset about like the first day because, you know, her daughter, uh, she had heard about, about uh, this that. guy before. We're learning a little bit about that. Take a listen to Dave Mack, Crime okay. Online. A month away from turning 20, Sade Robinson tells a maintenance worker at her building that she's excited about her first date with 33-year-old Maxwell Anderson. Robinson texts Anderson about where to eat and tells him she's feeling seafood. Anderson takes Sade to a place he used to work, the Twisted Fisherman. After dinner, they spend some more time together having drinks at Duke's on Water. 
The couple leaves Dukes together around 9 p.m. We're telling everybody about. Um, tell me how we know, Alexis, that the two actually went out. Because uh, reports are in our investigation tells us that there may have been either surveillance footage or witnesses placing, placing them to, at Twisted Fisherman where he worked, and then later at Dukes on Water. How do we know that they were together that night? They met there. There are multiple surveillance cameras outside these restaurants, both of them, that show oh, yeah, both her them. arriving, walking through the east side of the restaurant. He arrived on the west side of the restaurant. There's such good video footage of this. This is just such a good, helpful part of the case. They go there together. He used to work there. So that's going to be huge because they'll be able to see what she was wearing. That clothing was found in her car when it was later dumped. Obviously, she's with him. Uh, just more evidence uh, that they can the use against him. So the bartender there spoke with police and said they came in. They sat at the bar together. They had a drink. It seemed friendly and casual. Nothing that would alert the bartender to anything that was wrong. He said they just had a few drinks and they left within an hour. They then, according to surveillance, leave together surveillance videos to the. So again, 942, they arrived there. And now knowing what we know now, if he's leaving at 1247, that's like three hour difference. I would think um, maybe she freaked out when he took her down to the basement. Um, and I didn't know at this, I don't know if it's revealed in this interview or not, but they did find blood in the basement of hers. Um, so she was attacked down there. Which just terrible. So I would think at the most an hour and then, because I'm assuming that would take a quite a bit of time to do what he did. So he leaves at 1247, and now we have more information about what he did from there. And so he heads southeast, I think I said southwest, southeast, out of his, a, uh, pull up this, do. So this is his home here. And we zoom in, and here's the alleyway, which is uh, just kind of a one-way street. And both houses on each side here, they share this same road, and they have all their garages, which are lined up. So, you know, the people that live here on this street and here on this street, all their garages and uh, parking stalls are in the back here. So he is actually leaving and going up north, and then the camera's probably I think right here looking this way and he's going here taking a right and then he runs uh, and heads east southeast and then goes to the park here getting rid of the first part of remains um, let's see here let me get to chat da, 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 da. Sade's mother. Ms. Scarborough, when did you real? I know that right now you're at your parents' home. Oh, I just want to grab this. Uh, Miranda Lee, love the mob crew. Chris, we all appreciate you and your hard work. Thanks for having a wonderful channel. Thank you so much, Miranda Lee. Appreciate the support. Uh, it'll help us. Again, we just got back searching for Aiden Clune. We're going to be going back out next weekend. We're about like 80% locked in. I just got to make some final um preparations um but again all your guys support uh donations venmo paypal memberships uh hitting the like button subscribe helps us able to go out and help search for the missing i know that sade as you beautifully described it had her own little bachelorette pad that she paid for from her two jobs she's working while getting her college degree amazing so when did somebody realize they needed to call you 
and ask, right. where's Sade? Yeah, so it was Wednesday, Nancy. I I was at my job. I went to work that morning. I got off as soon as I got home from Yeah, so she says Wednesday. So they had the date on April 1st. It's a Monday. And then sadly, she's deceased by Monday night. Tuesday, early morning. Um, that is when he's disposing of her. So I don't know if maybe she just got... Because she says Wednesday, but everything else says that, uh, you know, they find some remains in her car on Tuesday. So I, I think maybe just everything going on, maybe she just misspoke. Mark, um, I was receiving calls from, like, my, my, my mother and my brother. We were all concerned because we all have the... Or maybe she found out on Wednesday. Location. I just thought she'd okay. find out on we Tuesday. We all shared as a family. So I have the app shared with me, my mom, both of my daughters. And then my daughter also shares Shade, my oldest daughter, also shares the app with additional friends. And Sorry, so I was probably over speaking. So they have the life, I call it a life, life alert, the Life360 app a lot of people are using. She had the iPhone. And so she she goes on to talk about that, and I don't know, she kind of starts talking about something else. I wish she would have finished her thought on this. Like other groups, but I have my own group with her, myself, my mother, and my youngest daughter. So we seen her, like, at this location Monday. Like, again, Monday night, she I seen her getting, I mean, Monday morning, I seen her getting ready for work. She FaceTimed me. Then she, that evening, around 3... 45, 4 o'clock, I got a text message from her asking a cash app for $15. My daughter does not ask me for money. Like, she has, my daughter makes more money than me. Okay? Literally. She's, that was that boss. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, like, Norman. On Saturday, April 6th, MPD continued the search of, in the area and located additional human remains on the railroad tracks. Later in the evening on Saturday, April 6th, yeah. MPD returned to the area when Miss Robinson's family located her blanket. At this time, yeah, I was thinking about that too, uh, Salas. Um, you know, she was turning twenty. Now she she could pass for a twenty-one year old. Um, so I'd be kind of curious if she had a maybe a fake ID. I don't know. You know, uh, a lot of people have done that. So it's but. Um, yeah, I was thinking about that with the detectives located additional bar and drinks. Remains. According to court documents, the remains found Saturday included human flesh and a foot. The foot had pink nail polish, possibly matching the polish on the leg found days earlier. So before they had identified her, they that was one of the things that they figured that this was probably connected to her because of the fingernail polish. And I think it matched the polish on the feet along with the uh, arm that they recovered. A mile wide. You know, when you look at his home, you think, wow, beautiful yard, immaculately kept. You know why? Not because of him. 33-year-old former high school football star football star turned into this so crazy he's a nepo baby nepotism baby this 33 year old guy maxwell anderson has yeah. a millionaire dad who ran a milwaukee insurance brokerage firm now what do we know about him alexis therese chuck Oh, he don't worry about that, boss. He has been arrested for domestic, I'm sorry, not just arrested, convicted for domestic abuse, for disorderly conduct, and for drunk driving. This guy has a rap sheet a mile long. He is not an upstanding citizen of the community. And the, as I said, these are not just arrests we're waiting to hear from. He has been convicted of all three of these things. Growing up the son of a millionaire businessman, Maxwell Anderson was a Catholic school prep football star with a bright future. I mean, I hate to say this. I mean, it looks like a normal guy. I mean, if you just saw his picture like this uh, without the caption, I mean, blue-eyed, blonde hair, curly, curly blonde hair. Oh, this poor girl. Former football star. 
I mean, I just, I don't understand how a person like that can turn into a monster. Anderson works for his millionaire dad's insurance companies with limited success. But when his father moves to Florida, Anderson stays in Milwaukee working as a bartender. A former co-worker of Anderson, Samantha Brenner, describes Anderson as erratic, sometimes getting drunk while bartending at Victor's nightclub. A friend describes Anderson as childish and having quite the temper. Victor's nightclub, so I think... If in the notes he had worked there as security and was a bartender, uh, but he would just show up for my, for I recall, um, cause he probably was a spoiled brat. Uh, he just showed up when he wanted to. Joining me right now. Uh, Peggy says, I'm originally from Wisconsin, and I know these areas. Yeah, that's wild. D is from out there. I know another that lives uh, north of that area. Police find a foot, a pe a appear apparently human flesh at a playground, pink nail polish matching up. In the home, they find blood, gasoline containers. Mm-hmm. Packages addressed to the defendant, very important. Blood on a comforter, blood scattered throughout the home. Let me tell you this, and I'm going to go to you, Faddis, with me, high-profile trial lawyer, uh, TV legal analyst, founding partner of the Warner Faddis Elite Legal Group. Eric, I agree with Delatory. This isn't his first time at the rodeo. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Will they find other victims' DNA in his house? Was she the first one, or was there others? Or maybe will there be other victims that come forward that maybe weren't that weren't attacked, obviously are alive, but maybe they went down there and they saw the dungeon and they were able to get out but never reported anything, but may after this and seeing his face on the news, maybe uh, they'll come forward. But I would not be surprised if uh, they do find other remains. You don't go from zero to 120. Looks very arrogant. MPH yeah. in two seconds. There has to be something, some revving up, up to not only a murder, but a luring luring her onto a date. How yeah. many times do you think he watched her? Kind no, of I only say about his looks is that, you know, if anybody, he's not a bad looking guy. I mean, if you just heard bl blue eyed, blonde, curly hair. Um, Man, have a drink, have shows. dinner, anything like Crazy. that. Before he gets the guts up to say, hey, would you like to go to dinner? He planned this. You think you go from zero to murder and dismemberment in one night? Oh, I agree with Miss Scarborough. Yeah, he does have this is glare. not his first time. And Delatory hit it on hit the nail on the head. What about it, Eric? So there's the home and there's the hole. And I think I zoom in on this one so we can kind this, of see. You know, uh, the yeah, so they're uh so I wonder if he dug that before and maybe was planning to dump a body in there and then for whatever reason I decided to do it a different way. Details give uh, rise to weird. a predatory nature here. That there's a huge age gap, right? And and then there's also a friend who says that Maxwell Anderson had a five foot by six foot deep hole dug in his backyard. And then we look at the rapidity, how how quickly um, it, the, the, this turning from a murder to dismemberment in, in, a, in a like overnight. That's not something that just happens on a whim. In my personal opinion, that's something that was planned out and and is just no, grotesque. Sorry in terms of what we've learned. So yeah, yesterday they found more of her remains uh, down south of where they found that uh, original human leg. And here's the picture of him on the bus just after. Oh, and I hate seeing this picture because I'm assuming this shortly after he got on and it looks like 
because uh, we're going to hear, I don't know if we heard the report yet. I think it plays now. Um, but there was actually a witness. So this is, I mean, he's got so much evidence like, already against him, but the more the merrier. Uh, there was actually a witness uh, that saw him lighting the car on fire. A bus. Um, the booking photo seems to be the same guy wearing the exact clothing depicted on the subject who fled the scene of the car arson, including a large tan backpack with tan oh, stripes. Yeah. Also feeding it, there's the shot, Alexis, that we got from the affidavit, which is very lengthy, that goes to corroborate the gas cans found in his home. He is the guy, according to police, that burned Sade's car that she worked so hard to buy all on her own, holding down and there was two an jobs eyewitness for while that. going to college. Uh, go ahead, please. There was an eyewitness to the burning of the car. As Sade's mother said, this community did everything. When it happened, he well, the eyewitness said they saw a man in a jacket with a backpack close the door of this Honda and flick a lighter into the car and it burst into flames. And so the person started screaming, he did that, he did that, he did that. And he he ran away. That person contacted the police to tell them about being the actual eyewitness to him burning it. This was absolutely the community being on their high alert and really helping out here. Uh, let's see. On April the first. Okay, here is the text messages between them two. So, let's see. Do I have her voice? Going? This is coming from the criminal complaint. Take a look at your screen. Here it is. Sean Day saying, "Where are we meeting? I can do five. Maxwell saying, "Back hmm, downtown somewhere." She says, "Okay." He suggests Brad House on third. She says, "Perfect." He says, "Okay, I'm going to shower quick. I'll probably get there more on five fifteen. Are you hungry?" I need to stop at Twisted Fisherman to pick up my W-2 from last year. We could eat there first. She says, okay, and yes, are we eating at the Brat House or the other place? He said, let's eat at Twisted. I'm feeling seafood. She says, yes, I love seafood. He says, sounds good. I'm about to leave. I'll be there soon. Chief Ann Neighbor's security camera shows two figures entering Anderson's backyard at 9.24 p.m. At 12.47 a.m., a street camera shows Robinson's car departing Anderson's home. A camera at Cudahy High School shows a car drive toward the pump house at Warnemont Park at 2.53 a.m. A figure is seen walking from the road and climbing down the bluff to the beach several times. At 4.31 a.m., the car leaves the park. Three hours later, bus surveillance catches a man carrying a yeah. tan backpack walking away from a fire at 30th and Lisbon. At 8.12 a.m., Anderson, carrying a tan backpack, is seen boarding a bus heading toward his home. Anderson gets off at 8.35 a.m. and enters his backyard eight minutes later. Yeah, so he ditched that car definitely in... In a spot he knew that he had just hitched the bus. Oh, where is his? Oh, I need to bring this back over. So that was right there. Now if you look, it's like a straight shot south. And here's even the bus route from there. And so where he ditched that car um, and some remains in this area, and I think just right up here. And then set the car on fire. And then there's literally... Let's see, where is it? Oh, yeah. There's the bus stop. So, bus stop. And then it just shoots straight south. And then it literally just drops him off right by his... Right near his street. And then he's just got to walk a few minutes down the street. And he's back home. I don't know, seeing that picture of him on the bus, though, knowing that he was just seen throwing a lighter on the vehicle, trying to torch the car, probably ditched, ran down the street. So he probably didn't park close enough to the bus stop, so he wasn't just standing there waiting for the bus, looked like an idiot. So he went around down the street a bit and around the corner. 
just trying to look at where this is at. Yeah, so the bus stop here. So he would have ran down there or maybe cut through, but uh, and then hopped on the bus. And so seeing this picture uh, is him. I mean, it looks like he's almost like sighing, you know, in relief that he he made it this far, even though he'd be arrested two days later. It'd be second April. Yeah, April fourth. Um, but yeah. Eric Faddis, think about it. You just told us that in the perp, the alleged perp's backyard, there was a grave dug. I mean a full-on grave, five feet, I believe you said. What person does this? You have murdered a teen girl, and you dig a grave in the backyard, and then you think, oh, wait, you know what? Never mind. I'll just go through a very lengthy dismemberment and then I'll scatter this little girl's remains all across Milwaukee and hey, nobody will piece it together. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the alarming prospect here is, is for whom was he digging this five foot by six foot grave in his own backyard? You know, um, his friends were talked to and a lot of them said that hey, he had a creepy, weird vibe. He had erratic behavior. He may have had an alcohol issue. And then we look at, um, you know, there are gas canisters found in his home. Um, this quickly turns from date to homicide, to dismemberment, to scattering human remains all across Milwaukee. It's just not something that happens on spur of the moment, Nancy. So there's that. Uh, here's some of the places they found. Of course, it's just kind of going in order of what they found the remains. And they're still looking today. Uh, I think they have the sonar, um, underwater sonar for the uh, Lake Michigan, because I, I think that's where they think the rest of the remains, or at least whatever remains he had gotten rid of there, they're still looking for. But yeah, getting rid of remains at near a playground. Story tonight at five, Milwaukee County investigators found more remains believed to belong. To and so this is recent. This was from yesterday. And this is Johnny just Robinson. about south she, of course, of is the 19-year-old woman lake. police say was killed and dismembered after a first date. Christina Van Zels is live in South Milwaukee. That's where those body parts were found. Christina, what do we know? Ted, when it comes to this area, it's technically closed off, but people who live around here say many still yeah, walk he's along the shoreline the and the beach. Investigators tell us that they already had scheduled a sonar boat detection to go out and search Lake Michigan tomorrow before this discovery. But today, Shawnee Robinson's loved ones were out here searching for any additional clues they could find. Just the brutality of everything. It's an investigation leaving people in Milwaukee County speechless. Cutting up someone's body is just, it's hard to even say the words. Investigators say a person walking the beach spotted human remains around 7.30 Thursday morning. The sheriff's office says a torso and arm were found, believed to belong to Shade Robinson. She is the 19-year-old authorities say was killed and dismembered on April 1st. So that is, let's see, what do we start? At 5 o'clock. So that is the most recent thing. Um... And let me pull up on Twitter. I think there was. Sadie Robinson. Um, see if they found anything else. Sonar technology did not locate any additional remains. This is 26 minutes ago. Uh, today. Bruce Legacy, a nonprofit is working with Milwaukee officials to see if another search is warranted based on the investigation. Uh, and then it says, so what does this say? Five, April 2nd, Life 360, 130, so maybe this is them tracking her movement? I'm not sure. That's interesting. I'm going to snap that because he's got another hearing on the 22nd, which will be what, Monday? Yeah, today's Friday, so Saturday, Sunday. So he'll have court again next week, Monday. 
And these are the guys, and there's the underwater craft that they were using. Uh, nothing yet, so, but the mother says they have not had a uh, funeral yet because they still don't have all of her remains, which is absolutely terrible. And I don't want to speculate, but yeah, uh, I know they have both of her, most of her body, it seems like, but it seems there's still some pieces missing, sadly. Oh, there is a vigil. That's right. Um, thank you, Karen. Um, yeah, pink was her color. Thank you, guys. Uh, that's right. Pink is her uh, the color. I'm just seeing if there's anything else here. That is it. Say anything about the uh, vigil? Oh, here it is. Okay, so the vigil is video surveillance really da, 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 da. candlelight vigil tonight at Kilbourne Reservoir. So where is that? Kilbourne Reservoir Park. Oh, there it is. Get rid of that. Hillborn Reservoir Park. Oh, that looks like a cool... That looks like a nice little park. Um, so let's see. Cut. Alright, so this is kind of the area that they're fixated on. South Milwaukee area, downtown. And that's where he went first uh, is here. So I'm assuming maybe he got rid of a good portion of the remains in the water and then maybe they traveled south and then hopefully maybe whatever else that they need it'll they'll show up so they can bury their poor daughter oh man that is a terrible terrible tragedy uh let's see Why she went with them guys looking sick. Yeah. I don't know. It looks like the devil. And all the other photos. Yeah, I agree. He does look like the devil. Um, literally every other photo, he does look like the devil. Uh, I, I don't know which one it was. Like, I mean, honestly. Hey, well, I'm just, I'm not going to say anything. But. Yeah, even just, you know, you think blonde hair blue-eyed curly you know but yeah his eyes uh and all these other photos especially like this one yeah yeah that those are creepy um anyway we got uh almost 400 people in here thank you guys for taking the time to watch the show um before we go again we just got back searching for aiden clune um and next week, and I'm going to try uh, to get out there because we've got this new drone and I want to put it to, to work. So we're going to try to go search for her. It's an eight-hour drive from where I am. Um, and that's in Boise. Or actually, it's in uh, in Oregon, but on the border of Idaho uh, in Jordan Valley, Oregon here. So we're going to be searching for her next week. And... Um, Anyway, just want to mention that because uh, we always like to give back by featuring the missing. And so anyway, I just want to say thanks to everybody for the support. Um, may have a live for the members um, Sunday. Uh, let's see. I'm from Wisconsin. I remember them well. They're all like oceans. It's like oceans. Oh, how big the lakes are. Yeah, they they they're huge. Uh yeah, we just went over all that Denise. The exact details we don't know. Uh they have the killer. 
uh, I would catch the replay. Um, yeah, his family did. They made one statement. Uh, do I have the statement? Let's see. I do have the statement from the family. It is... Is it this one? With like Christopher Schwartz. Or is it the other one? From the family okay, it's the other one. Charged. Yeah, they did make a statement. Parking found and loved ones. All right help. here. Felt condolences to the. So on behalf of myself and my family, I would like to express our deepest sympathy and heartfelt condolences to the family and loved ones of Shade Robinson. We are shocked and devastated by her senseless death. And the then. And loved ones of Shade Robinson. We are shocked and devastated by. To Shade's mother and father, words can express our sorrow for the incomprehensible pain and grief you are going through. We join the entire community in celebrating Shade's life. So that's from the family of Maxwell Anderson, the alleged killer for now. Um, anybody that missed it, he's he was kind of a rich boy or that grew up in a rich family. Uh, and his actions speak that because it sounded like at least his last jobs or t few jobs he had, he would just show up when he wants. He did some bartending and he worked security. So, um, thank you so much, Connie. Yeah, like I said, uh, I do appreciate everybody, the members, and anybody that could donate or Venmo or PayPal. Because uh, again, we're gonna go right back out on the road and. Your guys' support, uh, I would not be able to do what I do. So, uh, With that, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. And I am going to head out and pray that my uh, AC guy shows up sometime this weekend. Because <laughs> I know one day it's going to be, uh, right now it's like mid-60s, but I know like in a day or two it's going to jump to 80 or 90 and then it'll, it'll be summer. So... And I'm working on the pet outro for those that send in the pets and haven't heard from me. Uh, you'll hear from me this weekend. Uh, so I should have the new pet outro maybe like Monday probably. Uh, just getting back from one trip and then planning another one. It's really tough. So, um, 